Okay, in this video, we're talking about bonding and we're gonna be dealing with the Lewis structure or the electron dot diagram. Now, according to your uh, New York State chemistry reference table, or just basically any periodic table, in order to find ionics, you're dealing with a metal and a non-metal. And so, in the three examples we have here, I have a metal and then a non-metal. So sodium and then chlorine, I have magnesium and then bromine, and I have aluminum and chlorine as well. And so, you do need to use your reference table. You do need to become familiar with the electron uh, configuration and specifically valence electrons. And so, for example, on uh, the periodic table, if you were to look up sodium, sodium is 281, and so that one is what we're really focusing on here. Chlorine would be 287, and it's the seven that we're focusing on in regards to the valence electrons. So one of the main things with ionic substances is that one of the materials loses an electron and becomes positive, one of the materials gains an electron and becomes negative, then you have opposites attracting and you have a really strong bond. And it's always the metal that loses the electron and becomes positive, it's always the non-metal that gains the electron and becomes negative. So when we're drawing something like this, we're gonna draw our first electron or our one, so we have one electron to draw for sodium, we have seven to draw for chlorine. And so if I draw my seven, I'm gonna use a different shape, I'm gonna use X's versus dots. The goal, of course, is to have the octet rule be accomplished. And so chlorine is missing one electron, but there's a transfer of electrons, and the chlorine has a higher electronegativity, so it has the ability to take the electron from sodium and we end up, again, sodium loses the electron, becomes positive, chlorine gains it and becomes negative. So our final product, Na becomes positive. Chlorine we're gonna put in brackets and I'm gonna designate that extra electron by a different symbol, again, just showing that it came from the sodium and then chlorine becomes minus one because it has gained one electron. Plus one, minus one, they balance out, they become neutral. And so that's one of the other key things. We need to make sure that the end result is a neutral material. Now, if we look at magnesium, magnesium is 282, and so it has two electrons we're gonna play with. Bromine and chlorine are both in the same group. They're in group 17, so they're also gonna have seven valence electrons. So when we look at this, notice in this case, I, it was a one to one ratio. Now I have a one to two ratio. Here I have a one to three ratio. So it really doesn't matter where you draw your bromine. We're gonna draw it on one of the sides. If you wanna put one on the top, one on the left, one on the right, one on the top, bottom, left, right, it's up to you. I like to just make it look a little as linear as possible or as much as linear as possible. And so my magnesium, for example, has two valence electrons. Now, where you draw them, if it's left side, right side, you know, one top, one bottom, top together, you may have learned different things from your teachers. But if we think about bromine, Bromine has one, two, actually we're gonna use, I'm gonna erase this. Again, we're gonna use different symbols just to show that they're coming from different elements. We'll use the X's again. So bromine has seven. In this bromine, uh, we'll use little triangles. That also has seven. And so each of them is missing one. They wanna meet the octet. And so this bromine is gonna take one of the electrons, so that's gonna go over there. This bromine is gonna attract one of the electrons, it's gonna go over there. And in the process, magnesium is gonna lose two electrons. When you lose two electrons, instead of like sodium, sodium lost one and became plus one, magnesium's gonna lose two and become plus two. So when we draw our final outcome, we have Mg becoming plus two, and then each of the bromines, we'll put them in brackets, we have uh, the one X, it doesn't matter where you put it, but just designate and show that it is different. Again, it just shows that you are aware that, it's, that it came from another element. Sometimes you might not see it, I like to show that. And just because again, I believe you understand it a little bit better because those were the original. So here's my bromine with the triangles. We got seven triangles. Yeah, they're not perfect triangles, but hopefully you get the idea. Each bromine becomes minus one so we wanna make sure we have those charges there because overall the system is going to be neutral. I have minus one and minus one. That adds up, of course, to minus two. Magnesium lost two electrons, so it became plus two. In the process, minus two plus two, they balance each other out. 
aluminum chloride, basically the same concept, but instead of doing two on each side, you know, one of them on each side for two, we actually need to add in a third position. Because aluminum has three valence electrons, it's gonna get rid of three. Chlorine, each of those have the ability to take on one more. So again, aluminum, depending on how you do it, has three valence electrons. I can have a chlorine here, a chlorine here, and a chlorine here, each of those with seven. So there's seven X's. We got seven triangles, and then uh, you know we got seven pluses. Whoops! Get rid of that one right there. So we have seven pluses. Hopefully that's still on the screen there. And what's going to happen is each of those aluminum electrons is going to be attracted by chlorine. So all three of those, and at the end result, we of course have aluminum in the middle. It lost three electrons, so it becomes plus three. And then we have our three chlorines. This is gonna be minus one. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, those were X's, sorry. Doesn't really matter, but like I said, I like to draw it so that you show some discrepancies, some difference. We have the ones with the triangles. And then we have the ones with the plus. Minus one, minus one, minus one. That balances out my plus three. Now, another way to show this, I'm gonna erase the top stuff. But another way to show this is a condensed version. And so, and you could do the same thing with this middle one too here. And it just saves a little bit about, or on what you're actually drawing. So ask your teacher, see what they uh, require. But another way you could look at this, you may see AL plus three, and then you might see three CLs minus one, okay? This represents the fact that there are three chlorine ions attached to the aluminum ion. So that's just another representation. That's just an alternate version. Those two basically mean the same thing. Um, depending on, you know, again, what your teacher requests or what they require, this is a more accurate depiction because it's representing how it is kind of a lattice work and a framework. And, you know, you have aluminums on different sides, you know, excuse me, chlorines on different sides of the aluminum instead of just aluminum and then chlorine, 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 okay? It's not all linear in a row. It's actually surrounding it on different sides, okay? So hopefully you found value. Again, this has been uh, Lewis structures, electron dot structures using ionic equations or using ionic formulas. So look forward to the other videos uh, if you need help on how to draw Lewis structures and also how to draw covalent materials with, again, your valence electrons and, again, bonding. Uh, with covalent materials using nonmetals and nonmetals, where again, ionic again is going to be metals and nonmetals. Covalent is just going to be nonmetals and nonmetals. All right, take care. If you have any questions, just leave them below. Thanks.